We make far more money doing this than anything else we have ever done as a reseller. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at something that we switched in our entire business that makes us far more money than anything else we've ever done as a full-time reseller. This has really changed the game for us like night and day. So we're in the hub and I'm looking at some sales uh, details here from a bunch of sales. I've got some open up here. We're just going to flip through them real quick. The point of this conversation is that about 60, 62 percent, if my math is right, of every item we sell is sold in a multi-item purchase. That means that instead of a person just coming and buying one rando item, one random item, they're buying at least two, three, four, five, six, seven, up until 135, almost 200 we've had sales, individual items all at the same time. Now, obviously, when I first started this, there's no way on earth I could do that. Everything was a one-off. Somebody would buy one item, and I'd probably never see them again. I was selling a lot of clothing, books, and stuff like that. Well, that's always you know, easy money if you get the right items. You get the really hot items. You get the ones that are in high-demand items. I can't get those. I can't get them in any of those fields around here because there's no place to get them. The, the thrift stores, there's only a few decent ones that even have halfway decent stuff. The Sabres are closed. Quite a few of the other ones have closed down years ago. It's been quite a few years now, five years, six years, since those sorts of stores closed down here. Estate sales around here. Somebody seems to have picked through every one prior to the estate sale actually opening up to the general public. And I know that's the case with a lot of them because I even get in sometimes into a estate sale ahead of time to help them with records and things. And sometimes I'll get a, a, a first pick and things like that, but not always. So I know that it's happening and I'm just lucky enough to get into certain areas that I know more so than any other folks. So it helps me in that aspect. But what happens when I've changed up what we sell I instead of selling clothing and one-offs and you know fighting at the, the thrift stores and driving all over town and stuff I've centered in on specific niches and the goal of centering it on a niche would be to learn it as much as humanly possible to know more than anybody else who's messing in that niche around you it's an investment it's going to cost you some time a lot of folks don't want to do it because they don't want to waste the time on it and they don't see it it's going to pay off for them. Now, I've spent years into the same same types of fields and stuff, so we're able to constantly get good stuff all the time, at least, you know, decent sellable stuff that sells for a, a decent price, and we usually have almost nothing into it because we buy it in massive massive bulk. It's a total switch up from the business that a lot of people may be doing. In doing it this way, what I'm looking for is longer tail items where I, it can build up massive quantities of items in the same specific categories. Because what inevitably happens is someone comes and buys several items. It's in a niche that they like. They're already collecting it. They're trying to fill spots in their collection. Now, right here are some uh, items that I sold. These are all presidential cards from the 1870s and 80s. And there's quite a few of them. This lot sold for 150 bucks, basically. And it's a bunch of different listings, obviously. They all sold around 1363 I want to say this person here reached out to us and uh, wanted to know if we take such and such offer on specific lots, which happens all the time. Now, a huge aspect of spending all this time and digging into this and investing into it is that what happens when people buy a bunch of... Almost always, it's like 90%, 95% of the time, if someone's buying multiple items and niches that I have tons of items in, they're going to be a repeat business. They're going to keep coming back over and over and over again. Now, the person who bought this, these cards here has been buying from us for around five years, just a hair over as of right now. So it's a routine, constant return on stuff, and they do spend a decent amount of money. This is the actual sales record. As you can see, there's the tax eBay collected. It doesn't, for some reason, have the shipping total in there, but they did pay shipping on this one. I, I billed them for shipping as well. For whatever reason, it's not up on here, but here's yet another one. Again, this is a multi-item sale. Two items, total price $50.99. 
Shipping is in this one for some reason, but here's somebody else. They bought three items here, thirty-seven, thirty-two. Again, they don't all have to be a fortune. Uh, ten dollar item, twelve dollar, fourteen, almost fifteen dollar item here. So, and they're all going in the same envelope, same package, same everything. So it's simpleton. Saves me money, saves me time, and then off it goes. And here's yet another one. Here's a whole bunch of stills. Now, individually, they weren't worth a ton of money. They're all from the movie The Jerk with Steve Martin from 1979. These are photo stills from a press kit. Looking through here, this sale was $88.34. Now, I did refund uh, all but, I think, $5 or $6 or something for shipping. If I didn't have multi-items in the same category, this couldn't happen. So when I was selling one-offs and stuff, this far outweighs any of the revenue I've had from doing pretty much anything else in reselling. I always go for the niches these days, and I always go for quantity. I don't think a day goes by where someone doesn't buy at least two items or more from me somewhere every single day usually on ebay it happens too here's yet another one now they bought five of one item so i have quantity of some so they bought five of one and one of another so all together they bought six different items total was almost 50 bucks in this one as well here's yet another one now they bought quite a few items as you can see what seven items it looks like here total price almost 110 dollars now if you look at these you'll see they're all like to like items all in the same niche. Each person's buying what they collect. I would far rather have collectors routinely coming back and all that repeat business, buying multiple items, than fighting around here trying to get a $100 shirt or a $150, $200 pair of shoes or something like that. Or the one video game that may be worth something at a garage sale or something. To me, that was the rat race. Half of my week was spent driving around and no guarantee that I would ever find anything. And it was beginning to be more and more that I run out there, I'm sourcing, trying to find stuff, and there's just nothing good to get. Or someone showed up the night before the garage sale opened up. That would happen all the time around here. This is far more lucrative, again, dealing in quantity and dealing in specific niches. And it, there's really no specific niche uh, that you can't do this in, but I picked ones that I liked and I picked ones that I could routinely get. If you can get other items in, in mass quantity, it works just fine. Sports cards, comics, whatever you happen to collect. Video games are great too, but I don't know anybody who can get thousands of them, you know, in good condition that are worth selling. In my Patreon page, I've been talking about stuff like this for a long time. YouTube membership, same thing. I'll be touching on these sorts of things as well. Here's yet another one. This is from somebody completely different. The last person collected coin buttons. This person collects train buttons from the Los Angeles area specifically. There are a few other ones they did buy, but this person has repeatedly bought from us over and over again. This sale was 115 bucks. Here's yet another one. Now, these are all by a specific maker, and that had a lot to do with why this person bought them. So this sale is $77 for four items. Here's yet another one. This sale was $70.50. All typical niches, all kind of tied together. And here's yet a couple more items to the same person. Now, this one here on the top, I believe, has a map and a train schedule. And this one down here is a map, just a scrap piece of paper. These two pieces of paper sold for $91. It's passive income. I, I put it up, and then I just forget about it until somebody nabs it. Here's yet some other items. These are poster stamps, basically like stickers for advertising things. This person has been buying from us for quite some time. These four little tiny pieces of paper sold for $71.26. Tens of thousands, hundred thousands of some of these items in inventory still ready to list. So I buy them in bulk when we can. Here's yet another one. This is an interesting lot. These are Arctic exploration cards. They're related to exploration in the Arctic in the 1870s and 80s. All sold to the same person. The top one is a card set of six, and the bottom one is another card, single card. This was $155 for six individual cards that I have almost nothing into. Here's yet another one. These are posters. This is $47 and some change for a few posters. These were paid for years ago. Now, everything I'm showing you today has already been paid for. 
These are items that I literally sold a few items out of the purchase. We got our money back. We've listed a whole ton of them and we keep getting routine income from them. The only thing coming out of this would be eBay fees at this point. Now here's yet some other ones. This person bought five items. $57.71 to the same person once again. Here's yet another one. This person collects items with birds on them. They have been buying bird cards from me for, geez, probably about four and a half years. Here's yet another one. This person bought two individual buttons. This is almost 80 bucks right here. And here's just another example of a very large order here. This person bought quite a few cards, as you can see. The total order purchase price was $237. Plus, they paid, obviously, tax and shipping. Now, this isn't anywhere near the biggest sale we've had. This is the last sale in the last 30 or 40 days, though. So switching up our business, cutting off all the other BS that wasn't getting us anywhere, switching it up to passive income, long-tail items, and massive amounts in specific niches has changed our world, changed my family's life, and changed my business overall for the best. We have been advancing steadily from switching over and getting rid of all the junk and, and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that you can't make a fortune or blow me away with clothing and stuff like that, but I can't do it. A large number of people don't have the sources to get the best stuff. It's something that's going to take you time. That's the biggest drawback to doing a business this way. It will take you time, not just time to list tens of thousands of items, but time to learn and not make mistakes where you're going to buy stuff that's just not worth selling. It's a huge learning curve to go into a niche. I don't care what niche it is. For us, I'm able to start with stuff I know like toys from the 60s, 70s, and 80s because I grew up on a lot of that stuff. So for me, that's, that's the first foray into niches. And then movie collectibles. I worked at a movie theater. Big fan of a lot of the sci-fi and stuff, so I've sold tons of that. There's so many different niches out there that you could do this very same thing with. When you get bigger and bigger in specific niches, people will reach out to you as well. And you won't have to do anything other than wait for your phone to ring many different times. People will call you out. It only takes a couple massive purchases to get you on your way. It only takes even one possibly if it's a big enough assortment that you're able to acquire in a specific niche to go uh, a long ways with this. We pick the ones that make us the biggest profit. We pick the ones that are the easiest to list. Most of the ones you see here are two photographs. We already have camera stand. It takes seconds to take a couple of photos this way, the way we do it. I have videos on it if you want to see, or I use a duplex scanner and I can scan both sides of a card in a second. You can do close to 100 cards both sides at the very same time in about a minute with these scanners. So having the right tools can cut your time down to list items. When I list items as well, too, like these items here, they were listed at the same time. So I didn't have to change the Cambridge, Ohio or numbers or the dates or a lot of other things in some of these. So I don't have to go back and change item specifics. I list them together. So all around, this saves us time, money and makes us a larger percentage of profit than anything else I have ever done. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Protection at your fingertips.